a very warm welcome to each and every one of you who is here. I'm Peter, one of the uh, staff here. Ross, our lead minister, will be preaching and leading communion later in the service. Uh, and a warm welcome to, to those of you who will hear uh, this service on CD or those of you who will see it on YouTube uh, in the days to come. And so at the beginning of a new year, uh, and also at the end of the Christmas season, uh, Psalm 67 is really quite appropriate as a call to worship at this time. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. And so with that remembrance of past and considering the present and looking to the future that God has in store for his people, we'll rise and sing the hymn, Lord for the Years. seated. And let us pause uh, quietly before God 
before we pray openly together. Let's have a moment of preparation. <clears throat> Lord of all the years, Lord beyond time, we come once again together into your presence, thanking you for what is past, thanking you for the blessings that we have known, many of us even in this past week, thanking you indeed for the personal blessings that we have received from you. Those blessings which are spiritual and relational, practical and emotional, all those different ways in which we can trace your blessing in the past, both in the past week, the past year, the past years. Indeed, Lord, for all that you have been to us and given to us, we do bring you our thanks today. And we turn to you in the present, in this moment. And we pray that your spirit will open our hearts to you at this moment. As over the past month we have considered the Word made flesh from John's Gospel, we pray that Jesus the Word will reveal himself to us this morning through your Spirit, through your Word, that it will inspire and fire us. But at this moment too we come recognising not just what personally we need, but what we need to hear from you as your people together. And indeed, what we know the world needs to hear and experience too. And so, Lord of the years, but Lord of today, we ask you to open our hearts to you. But at this moment too, Lord, as we look to the future in what we are considering over these next few weeks in our Sunday services, but beyond that too, as we look to the future, we have again to ask, Lord, as the hymn that we've just sung does, that you will take away our natural selfishness the way in which we tend to look at everything from our perspective. Take away those things from the past which would hinder not only our present, but our future. That you will renew us and inspire us through your spirit. And so we place our trust again in you and may we renew our commitment to you and in you, both today and into the future. This we ask in the name of Jesus, who gave us as a, as a prayer for all time, the prayer we now say together and is on the screens. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. In a moment, we're going to hear our first reading. Uh, the young people are going to stay with us for just a little bit longer yet. 
Uh, but I just want, before we hear the first of two readings that uh, Ross has given for us, uh, chosen for us today, to explain that over the next five weeks, but that is because the middle week is in fact different, but over the next uh, two weeks, and then another two beyond the 21st. We are looking at a series that Ross has asked that we consider together, which is in a sense culminating uh, what we have been doing as a church family in looking at our vision as a church, our values as a church, and the strategies that we need to have, some of which we're already discussing, in order to fulfil those. And the first, and both the readings this morning, relate to the first part of that theme, which Ross is going to preach on uh, later in the service. And the first reading is going to be brought to us by David Harrison. Our first reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Galatians, reading from chapter 3, verses 23 to 29. For those who wish to follow this, you may find it on page 179 in the New Testament section of the Bibles in the pockets in front of you. It's entitled, The Purpose of the Law, where Paul then encourages and changes to focus upon Jesus. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptised into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. May God bless this reading of his word. Amen. Thank you, David. We're now going to sing a, a song which is probably known to a very good number of you, though I'm not sure that we've had it here for a, a good long time. Um, but we've chosen it, Ross and I have chosen it together uh, because of uh, particularly the middle verse uh, and part of the last of the three verses, which in view of the theme this morning seemed incredibly appropriate for us. Come people of the risen King, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice, one heart, one voice, O Church of Christ, rejoice.
will just pray for our young people uh, as they leave. Lord, thank you for those of every age who are part of the church family here and indeed church families elsewhere too. And we pray that you will bless those who will go out now in Jesus' name. Amen. And Sally will now bring our second reading. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is Jesus um, with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptised into our body, Jews, um, or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a body of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, there would the sense of smell be. But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, there would be, where would be the body? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. This is the word of the Lord. So Ross will now come and bring uh, God's word to us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Is that okay at the back? Fantastic. Well, I suppose for some of you, this is the first time I've seen you in 2024. So the obligatory Happy New Year. <laughs> you can say it back. Thank you. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Um, so as Peter so beautifully articulated earlier, um, as members over this past year, we have been exploring our vision, what we're hoping God wants for us for the future and beginning to articulate that. And we've done that by putting together a, a statement that seeks to, to say what we're hoping God wants for us in the future. The words are on the screen here. David, we have, that's fantastic. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize it was Dave. So, to be one church of diverse gatherings, where all feel safe, grow in wholeness, and discover and express the unconditional love of God revealed in Jesus. Maybe just take a moment, this might be your first time reading this statement. Um, if you're new here, um, or if you're, you're not a member and haven't been on a journey with us in these meetings, so maybe just take a moment to, to, to take in some of those large words and the profundity of what it says. Should we say these words together? So we say, to be one church of diverse gatherings, where all feel safe, grow in wholeness, and discover and express the unconditional love of God revealed in Jesus. And as Peter has, has rightly said over the, the coming weeks, we're going to be exploring this particular statement bit by bit. Um, and it falls to me to look at the first phrase of the statement, to be one church of diverse gatherings, unity and diversity. I wonder if you look at this painting with me. Hopefully you can see that from the back 
as well. What do you see? Some of you who are artistic will love that question. It engages your brain in a new way of thinking. Some of you are sitting there thinking, I hate those kind of questions. I can just see <laughs> random colors on a, on a platform. What can you see? Maybe you can see a line down the center and what seems to be two distinct color patterns yet contained within the same frame. How do you view this image? It was painted by a gentleman called Mark Wigan. Um, and on the back, he said this, do you focus on the whole picture or do you focus on the barrier between the two paintings? <coughs> Try standing back, fortunately you all are, and viewing it from a distance. I think these paintings are better together as we are better together. <laughs> to be one church of diverse gatherings, unity and diversity. Let's begin um, just reflecting on this particular phrase. Um, and as we do it, I want to begin by acknowledging this isn't a new idea, but this is rooted in, in Christian history. This idea of unity in diversity is, is seen throughout the warp and warmth of scripture, the ancient library of the Bible. Firstly, we see it in, in the beautiful metaphor that the Apostle Paul uses that Sally read for us wonderfully a moment ago, that, that metaphor of the body of Christ, as we see in 1 Corinthians 12. And just a few of those words again for you to reflect on. For just as the body is one and has many members, for all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, we were all made to drink of one spirit. We are diverse and yet we are one. Our diversity isn't a, a nuisance to be tolerated, but something that's celebrated. We all have a role to play, right? No one in this room is useless. In our great diversity, even within this congregation, everyone has a role to play. I think that's a beautiful message. And there's another wonderful metaphor that Paul uses, the metaphor of, of the holy temple. And he uses this in Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. He says, so then, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Again, the focus is, is a, a, of unity. We are all bricks within this holy temple, Jesus being the cornerstone that holds it all together. The foundation is not complete with, without us all being part of this holy temple in which God dwells. And then one of the radical things that Paul says in Galatians, there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. What a profound statement. Those distinctions that previously divided the ancient audience no longer exist. They are now united in Jesus. The same applies to us. Those barriers, those distinctions, we are united in our diversity. For us, it's like the two halves together to me, looking at yeah. here. That picture it looks like the cross. Like two halves, the cross. The cross. the cross between the two. Yeah. It's Bringing the two halves together, that is beautiful. Jenny was saying it's, it's like the cross bringing the two halves together, if I'm right, these two distinct pictures brought together 
by the cross. Yeah, what a wonderful, wow, thank you, Jenny. And uniting diverse people seems to be the biggest challenge that Paul is engaging with throughout the many letters that make up the New Testament. He always seems to be frustrated at one group or or the other. He berates the Jewish people for holding Gentiles, the non-Jews, to the rules and regulations that no longer apply to them. And he berates the Gentiles for being too entitled about their inclusion into the kingdom of God. His message repeated throughout these letters is something of unity in diversity. Jesus unites us all. And again, this is not a a new idea, but something that is rooted in the history of the church. So having established this foundation, we can ask the question, well, why is this a vision for the future? Ross, you've been talking now for five or so minutes and you've only talked about the past. Why is this a vision for the future? South Street Baptist Church is made up of many diverse parts, isn't it? We have gatherings that are focused on communal worship, like we have here on a Sunday morning. We have gatherings that are focused more on on, on mission in the community and and prayer, as we have within the Palace Gate Centre. We have gatherings that are focused on, on discipleship, small groups that help us go deeper in our faith and journey with Jesus that meet in people's homes and and, and here, there and everywhere. South Street Baptist Church is more than Sunday mornings. And there's a picture on the screen that I've I've put together. Um, I appreciate in every single sense it is not complete and I'm really unsatisfied with it. But it, it demonstrates my incapability, my lack of skill on PowerPoint. However, I hope it begins to demonstrate something of what we're talking about this morning. South Street Baptist Church being all of this, all of this, all of these different gatherings in some way contribute to who we are as church. South Street Baptist Church is is, is Dove Cafe, a community cafe um, that partners with Langdon Hospital a mental health hospital in in, in Dawlish, um, in which there's young men are given the opportunity to serve in the cafe to to gain some work experience, to increase their confidence and to begin their rehabilitation back into normal society. There's a reasonably priced lunch in this quiet space uh, where you'll get some coffee. I I shouldn't say quiet space. Dove Cafe is anything really but quiet. (laughs) Um, But you get free tea and and coffee and biscuits. It's a wonderful community cafe. There's a a quiet space, that's what I was meant to talk about, in the corner, that's there for those that might be struggling with a lot of the noise, can go find some space on their own. Uh, Equally, it's a chance to pray. There's opportunities in there to just be with God in that space. There's prayer stations on every table that encourage people to pray, and then two prayer times throughout the day. Again, anyone is welcome to come and join us. One of our gatherings is called Space. Um, The picture of the sofa in the corner, that's not a new interior designer, part of South Street Baptist Church, but a gathering that's partnering with the YMCA, seeking to provide a space for young people to go in the evenings. One of their big struggles is that young people don't have places to go at night that is not a pub. And they don't want their young people to be going there, not least because many of them have addiction or or had problems in the past with alcohol. So where can they go? Cafes are shut, other spaces won't welcome them. So hopefully space here on a Wednesday evening every other week is a place that they can come to socialize and one in which they can meet everyday people. All of you are invited. It's not just about young people. It hopefully will be a space that mixes the generations together. I have a vision of young people teaching older people how to use a phone and older people teaching young people how to do (laughs) cross-stitch or knit. I learned to knit when I came to South Street. Brilliant, brilliant skill. Renew Refresh um, is a well-being space 
that partners with uh, the charity Renew Wellbeing. It offers lots of, of craft materials, opportunities to paint, to draw, to write. There's a puzzle in the corner, there are games people can play. And the motto of the space is it's okay to not be okay. Renew space generally is quieter than Dove Cafe, apart from when I get a crazy idea about a game that we should play, in which case it gets a little bit more lively. But again, a safe space to come and be, the quiet space is available. There are two prayer times throughout the session and we have a blessing that everyone says together at the end. Brantford Speak. I'm going to go through all of these individually because I know many of you might know them and have been to all of them, but I'm very aware that many of you might not know them, might know a few, might not know others. So hopefully you'll forgive me in exploring them all. Brantford Speak is a, a wonderful chapel that has been a part of this church family for many years and it's in the gorgeous village of Brantford Speak. They have a, a, a I don't, I, I'm reticent to use this phrase, but it's probably the best that I could say, a more traditional style in some respects of worship, but it's in a very relaxed format that allows for a lot of creativity. And it's grown after the pandemic as people have found more, themselves more secure in that space, um, as this space can be quite large and intimidating for some, Brantford Speak is a smaller worship environment that they feel themselves more comfortable in. Open um, is an online community. Um, we've been meeting since the pandemic, I think, it's about 2020, we, we opened the community online. Um, and we've been discussing important topics of theology, faith and life creating an environment in which people can ask the questions they want to ask, where there's no judgment uh, about the things that you're, you're thinking, but giving space to, to process those things, to deconstruct faith in order to reconstruct something that's positive and life-giving. We meet roughly every six weeks for a social, where we go to abbeys or we go for a swims in the sea or river, um, and we just gather together to see each other's beautiful faces beyond the screens. And finally, I've included small groups in, in here as well. As I've, Peter um, started this initiative with a huge help from Mary um, over the past year, re-establishing some of our small groups, but also restarting so, or starting some new ones. And small groups are a great way to grow in discipleship, to study the Bible together in, in detail, to worship together, to pray together, to journey together. They are gatherings in every respects in which we worship and grow in our faith in Jesus. All of these gatherings make up South Street Baptist Church. All of them help us to be the body of Christ as we reach out to our community and pray with them as we engage in formal acts of worship, as we grow in our discipleship together. And this way of seeing church, hopefully is raising lots of questions in your mind. How do we foster oneness? How are we one if the people from this gathering don't know the people from these gatherings? What is it that unites us? Other than Jesus, what do we gather around? What does it mean to be a member of South Street Baptist Church? How many gatherings do you need to be involved in to be a member? What level of commitment does it require? These are the types of questions that we're gonna be exploring um, as members as we seek to, to make this vision a, a reality. I'm not naive to this at all. These are, are wonderful, exciting questions, I feel, that we need to ask to bring this vision into reality. To be one church of diverse gatherings. And you'll be surprised to know this excites me. <coughs> Believe it or not, despite some popular belief, I'm not excited by everything, uh, <laughs> despite my generally <laughs> excitable characteristics. But this vision really excites me because over the years I've witnessed too many people left on the margins of church who don't fit in with the culture of Sunday morning services. 
We have a particular way of doing things, and that's wonderful, but it won't be able to engage everyone. For example, what, are the, what about those who are illiterate? Those who have a, a low level of, of reading? They would struggle in our services. Those who have a very limited attention span, maybe those who have ADHD, attention deficit disorder, those who have learning needs. What about those who've had a, a bad experience of church? And in fact, even walking into this kind of space is something that, that makes them react physically. What about those who have different learning styles? We're very wordy, aren't we, on a Sunday morning, which is wonderful. I love words, personally. But I know many that that's just not a medium in which they engage with God or, or, or a learning style they're particularly familiar with or enjoy. What about those with severe mental illness? Those who struggle with the, the, the discipline and the structure, maybe, of, of a Sunday morning service, whose lives are more, more chaotic. None of this is to diminish the importance or validity of this Sunday morning service or Sunday morning services across the board. It's to simply say that it's not the only way we can worship God and not everyone will fit within this format of worshipping God. I fell in love with South Street Baptist Church because there are already so many ways in which someone can worship God. It's the reason I'm still standing here. It's the reason I am proud of being a minister of this church. Because for many years, well before I came, you've been fostering this culture in the way you do things. There have always been a vast array of gatherings that make up who you are. I don't claim that we're doing something even overly profound in this statement other than articulating what's really existed for many years and bringing that into focus in how we act and behave. So this vision excites me because it seeks, seeks to bring those people that I've so often seen left on the margins into the centre. Not doing this by attracting them from Dove Cafe, Renew Refresh, Open Space, into a Sunday morning and saying, come here because this is how you become a Christian. But in fact, acknowledging that there is something of church in the gathering that they attend. God is there as much as God is here. I truly believe all these diverse gatherings are sacred in some way. And we can support and nurture them in their faith, in the gathering that they're comfortable in. Why is this a vision for our future? Because we are seeking unity in our diversity because we are one body of many parts to be one church of diverse gatherings i realize i've said a lot um, so just maybe if we could pause for a moment um, in a second we are going to share the peace with one another because i've been reflecting on what what is the best way to express this well as a sign of our unity in diversity that we could shake hands that we could express that peace to one another but before we do that let's just have a moment of silence and you may wish to look at this picture here you may wish to just close your eyes but let's bring what we've heard before god and process some of the thoughts jumping around our minds If you could reply to what I'm about to say with also with you. The peace of God be with you. Thank you. Let's show each other a sign of the peace. And the song that we've chosen 
uh, at this point uh, is one which is particularly appropriate in view of what we've been considering and are considering, and as we move in a few minutes' time also uh, to communion, and that is Jesus be the centre. Let's rise to sing. Jackson is now going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. We bring our intercessions to God, believing that he already knows the burdens and concerns we carry. We pray for our world, our loved ones and ourselves. Please join me in prayer. Let us pause briefly as we pray so that we can truly feel that, that we are united in our prayers. The Japanese earthquake disaster. For all who mourn the loss of loved ones, friends, homes and livelihoods, for the bravery and skills of rescue teams and charities ready to provide shelter, food, clean water and comfort. We praise God for the miraculous evacuation of passengers and crew from the Japanese airline collision and pray for those who sadly lost loved ones in the Coast Guard supply plane. And for safe landing of the aircraft travelling from Oregon to Alaska. We pray for the end of the ongoing conflicts an appalling loss of life and devastation between Israel and Gaza, Ukraine and Russia, for those involved with the Houthi terrorist group in Yemen. On this first Sunday of a new year, we pray for our Palace Gate Centre staff and volunteers, the user groups and their leaders, the attendees and the various anonymous groups, and also support for families coping with addicts. The work of Amnesty International 
seeking justice and release for so many who are unjustly jailed, often in dreadful conditions and suffering torture as well. We remember too all who are affected by and coping with the ongoing aftermath of the widespread flooding in our own country. For those involved in evacuation and rescue, and for those who provide shelter and basic necessities of life. We pray for our Prime Minister, his cabinet members, and all who serve us in Parliament, for wise and just decisions to be made for the good of all, especially in this year of another general election. For members of our church family and others for whom we are concerned, those for whom each day is a struggle, the carers, those awaiting hospital appointments, test results and surgery. We pray for God's peace and healing according to their needs. And following on from Ross's helpful and thought-provoking sermon, help us, Lord, to remember in the words of the hymn that in Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. As we close with the words of Fred Kahn's hymn, may we make his words our own. Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe we are ourselves accepted and meant to love and live. Teach us, O Lord, your lessons, as in our daily life we struggle to be human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for people, for all, not just for some, to love them as we find them or as they may become. Let your acceptance change us so that we may be moved in living situations to do the truth in love, to practice your acceptance until we know by heart the table of forgiveness and laughter's healing art. Lord, for today's encounters, with all who are in need, who hunger for acceptance, for righteousness and bread. We need new eyes for seeing, new hands for holding on. Renew us with your spirit, Lord. Free us, make us one. Amen. In a moment, Ross will take over and conclude the service, which will culminate in communion. But just before that, one or two notices, and then we will take up our offering. Now, as you've heard Ross uh, bring before us this morning, we meet in many and different ways. Uh, our giving uh, as a church is 
we, we need to be honest, fairly heavily dependent on God's people in the morning service and at Brantford. And uh, because there are many who are part of the wider church family, part of our mission, who are unable to give. And so as we, we bring our offerings to God, we will stand as we dedicate ourselves, as well as the offering, to his service. Thank you. Lord, as we bring these gifts, we dedicate them to your service, to the work of your kingdom in so many ways in this church, as well as beyond it. But in bringing what we have given, we bring ourselves, and we ask that we will be committed to the work which you have called us to do in this place. In Jesus' name, Amen. Part of the, the reason we light this candle is recognizing our unity and link with the Bahambag Church in, in Germany. Part of the reason this tradition began. Let's just have a moment of, of silence as we come to this sacred table and engage in this sacred act. Loving God, thank you that you are present in this space. And because of that truth, because you are present within us as well, as we come to this table, we know that this act gains a, a sense of sacredness. That these elements, that this act of remembrance, of remembering your cross, we pray in it, we will be drawn closer to you, Jesus. And that you will fill us with your spirit, that we will leave this place with the energy we need to face the weak and the courage to be like you, Jesus. Amen. There are some words on the screen that I would love us to say together. So we say together, Jesus, we come to your table Diverse, but united. Different, but together. Jesus, we come to your table. Weary, but persevering. Tired, but hopeful. Jesus, we come to your table. Doubtful, but resilient. Anxious, but open. Jesus, we come to your table. As we are. Flawed and imperfect, but deeply loved by you. The Apostle Paul says these words, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a moment, the service will bring round the bread. Um, please take one and eat when you receive. But if you don't want to join in, feel free just to allow it to pass by. Thank you.
In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Again, the cups will be handed around um, in a moment. They're not alcohol, um, but a substitute of some kind. Uh, So please hold on to your cup when you receive it, and we'll all drink together. Please, will you stand if you're able? We drink together, acknowledging the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And we dedicate in this moment the vision he has for this church, that we would trust it into his hands. Amen. you're standing please stay standing as we sing um, our final hymn be thou my vision Blessing by by Simon Woodman. May God, the three in one, 
who binds us together in community as one body, fire us by the Spirit, inspire us to live the life of the Son, and indwell us with the love of our divine parent, this day and forevermore. Amen. Mm-hmm.